Professor uh, Senator Rennick is over the telephone, so you won't see him. But um, the floor is yours, Senator Rennick. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Mann. My question is: you talk about a scientific consensus. So my question is, what are the facts? And I just want to refer to two energy budgets I had here in front of me. One was given to me by the CSIRO that had a downwelling radiation from greenhouse gases of 333 watts per square metre and one um, from the Australian Academy of Science that had a downwelling radiation from greenhouse gases of 342 watts per square metre. So there's a difference in downwelling radiation between the two... Uh, scientific institutions or what they claim to be in their energy budgets of nine watts per square metre. Now, the IPPC, IPCC has claimed that the increase in radiative forcing from carbon dioxide has increased by two watts per square metre since 1750, uh, regardless of cause. So given that the two scientific bodies have a difference of nine watts per square metre, that's over 400% uh, of what... Um, the IPCC is claiming to uh, in the increase in carbon dioxide. How, why is it that we can't question facts like that? So, you know, what, you're citing some figures. I would have to look at them and, and put them in context and, and make sure that what you're uh, describing um, is, is correct. But uh, it's actually irrelevant because you're talking about um, t some large absolute numbers, uh, what we're dealing with um, is the difference between these numbers. And in many, in, 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 in a very real sense, it's actually easier to measure those differences. It's why we talk about temperature changes in terms of uh, temperature anomalies. We don't report the actual temperature of the earth because that depends on baselines, different elevations are gonna have different temperatures. So we, we measure differences and we can often measure differences very accurately. So for example, with respect to the energy budget, we can measure the heating of the oceans. That is the best integrator that there is of the imbalance between the incoming um, radiation and the outwelling radiation. And we actually, reported uh, on some recent findings uh, about ocean heat content uh, just last year. Um, the oceans, uh, we have measured the, the highest heat content ever in the global oceans, two years consecutively. And the, the heat, the increase in that heat content is consistent, is entirely consistent with the estimated influence of the increase in greenhouse gas concentrations from fossil fuel burning. So wouldn't you have to accept that if we are to benchmark uh, human uh, performance in, in, in reducing carbon dioxide and the, in, and the alleged impacts of it on heating the Earth's temperature, that we need our scientific body to be able to record the downwelling radiation from greenhouse gases consistently and accurately? Oh, I mean, every, every group is, is, you know, uh, that analyzes these data is doing its best job to um, estimate these numbers um, accurately and, and objectively. And I would, again, I would have to look at the context of what you're describing. I can't accept it at face value. What I can tell you is that we have data that actually does that integration for us. Um, the ocean heat content is the best data that we have to measure the heat imbalance in the global climate system. And, and, and those measurements tell us you know, they, they validate the climate model simulations. They validate our basic understanding of the impact of increased greenhouse gas concentrations from fossil fuel burning. So, you know, I don't think there are any uh, glaring inconsistencies, but it's easy to, you know, point to one paper or another and without putting it in proper context, it's very difficult um, to, to discuss what that may or may not mean. What I'm telling you is that we have very reliable data that we can use to measure the heat imbalance, and it's exactly as we expect it to be. So when you measure that data, that's in regard to radiative heat. Uh, in regards to a vex, uh, convection, are you saying that the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to heat generated from carbon dioxide? I don't know how you might have deduced that um, statement from what you said. Um, what I'm saying is that you're citing numbers 
that I haven't been able to vet, I haven't been able to validate, I haven't been able to put them in context. So I'm not going to comment on them because I, I'm not convinced that they're correct or meaningful. Oh. What I can tell you is that what you're interested in is the bottom line, and that's what we care about here, the warming of the planet due to fossil fuel burning. Um, then I'm telling you that we have very robust data that tell us that the planet is warming up as we expect it to. So you were saying you're not familiar with the IPCC paper AR5 that was released in 2004. No, you refer to two back. different reports and two different estimates, and I don't and, and know I what page reported. of what yes. report that that might be or what the what the footnotes might be or what the error bars okay. might be. So, so I have no have to, context can to I, evaluate sorry, what Senator you're Rennick. about. Senator Rennick, yes. if I could, uh, just as chair, we'll just bring you back to the terms of reference of this inquiry. Um, and I think the witness has said that um, uh, they would have to, uh, the professor would have to uh, uh, understand what these reports are that you're referring to. I think that's a fairly reasonable um, request, and um, okay, so, so we're not I'll, we're not here to argue. We're here to ask for expert opinion. So. Okay, and, and I am. So I'll, I won't refer to the CSIRO report or the Australian Academy of Science report. Are you saying you're not familiar with the IPCC report? that says that the amount of radiative forcing has increased by two watts per square metre since 1750. You're not prepared to I, I didn't, those numbers? No, I, I didn't say, and again, I don't have the IPCC report in front of me, so I don't know exactly what number they specify, but um, what you describe, it is consistent with our basic understanding. The increase in CO2 concentrations from fossil fuel uh, burning thus far amounts to a forcing of a little more than two watts per meter squared. Um, so that number that you cited does um, comport with um, uh, you know, the, the, the basic physics of the greenhouse effect. Uh, I can't tell you what the exact number is that is reported by the most recent IPCC report and what the error bars or uncertainties are without looking at that page of the report. I wish I have committed the entire several thousand pages of the IPCC reports to memory, but my memory isn't that good, and so I do actually have to, to look those figures up. Okay. Um, Senator Rennick, um, we'll uh, need to leave it there. Yeah.